You are Mr. Larry Taylor, right? Right. And uh, what rank were you? Captain. Captain. Yeah, I was in the 4th Cal, 1st Infantry. <clears throat> I was in ROTC at the University of Tennessee. And everybody knew they were going to Vietnam, so it was just a question of time. So it took me five years and four summer schools to get through college. Uh, I wasn't stupid. I was holding down three jobs while doing well working. But anyway, uh, so I thought, well, hell, if I'm going to Vietnam, I want to fly. So mm -hmm. I took uh, the, uh, the flight course up there. And they, the Army gave you 20 hours. And then I went to Morristown, Tennessee, and got another 20 that I had to pay for and got my private pilot's license. And I thought, well, hell, helicopter school will be a, a breeze uh, because I'm already a, a pilot. <clears throat> no, he did the helicopters. It, an airplane wants to fly itself, mm -hmm. and a helicopter wants to beat itself to death, and it will if you don't control it. Mm -hmm. uh, takes a long time. The hardest part of flying a helicopter is hovering it. The first week I couldn't keep that damn thing in a 40-acre field. I just, I just did all kinds of stuff, and the instructor would say, here, and the helicopter would blow. And he says, all right, you've got it. All right, I got it. Pretty hell, there it goes again. But after about a week, he finally learned to hover it. And uh, then you just build on that. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't take anything from my flying uh, experience. And, and as I said before, we flew the old B model Huey gunships. <laughs> because they were really too small to carry more than five people. Is that what you trained on? Huh? Is that what you trained on? That's what I, I, I got to Vietnam. That's what I was flying when I got to Vietnam. Okay, yeah. were you, but, uh, in flight school, were you using the helicopters from Korea? <clears throat> yeah, I used an H-13. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the last month, we transitioned into Hueys, but the H-13 was for instrument school. Okay. Because you had, to, you had to pass instrument school before they would let you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was exciting. Uh, I set one down in a, in a peanut patch in Op, Alabama, and just the engine just quit. And I found a nice place to sit down. And the instructor says, good, you did good. Now let's see if we can get this thing to fly out of here. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and we did, but flight school was, uh, was I knew I wanted to be, to be flying and not on the ground. Uh, being on the ground, somebody asked me, what, 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 what was it like in Vietnam? And I said, it was long periods of sheer boredom, interrupted by brief moments of stark terror every day. Yeah. And I said, well, a lot of people say that. And I said, well, that, that's true. I was, uh, I was assigned to the 1st Squadron, 4th Cav, 1st Infantry Division. That's where all your aviation assets were, 4th Cav. And uh, you, you work very close with the 1st Infantry Division. We worked uh, closely with uh, Long Range Reconnaissance Patrols. And that's, that's where they take four or five Rangers, dump them out in the middle of the jungle and see how long they can stay before they kick Charlie in the nose and yeah. then you have to go get them. Yeah. Um, Were those rangers there to build up local forces to fight against uh, Charlie? Not so much. These were, these were, they were rangers, but they specialized in long range reconnaissance patrols. Oh, okay. They would take three or four, dump them out in the jungle, and they may wander back in in a week. So they'll map out the area? and see who's there, who's operating it, and try to get intelligence uh, from, from the enemy. Okay. 
And did they all speak Vietnamese? No. No. Uh, the, not to my knowledge, maybe 10% did. Mm -hmm. But uh, after a while, you picked up enough Vietnamese to make yourself understood. Mm -hmm. but it, it wasn't pretty, but it was understandable. One mission, uh, it's written up in a, in a book by uh, Gary Landover, and it's also written up in a book by uh, a fellow named Stanton. And it was this that mission there where we extracted uh, we extracted four lerps, two on the rocket pod and two on the skids, and that had never been done before. Yeah. And uh, I got a I got a good chewing out about that. But, uh, <clears throat> I said, "You want me to take them back?" No, smart ass. Uh, um, but yeah, I would, I'd do the same damn thing tomorrow because those guys, if I got shot down, they'd be in there picking me up yeah. and carrying me out. Yeah. Well, can you tell me about uh, what it was like when you first arrived in Vietnam? Where did you, uh, where did you ship into, like, uh, and what was the atmosphere like? We shipped into uh, uh, Benoit, which was a a center for processing people in and out, and it was, hell, it was like any stateside thing except you got mortared every night. Yeah. Uh, and then once they decided, okay, your orders are good, you're going to First Infantry Division, get in that jeep, and it's across the river, about ten miles over there, and go to a little place called Zion and tell them here I am. And then you move up to Fuloy to your uh, to your unit.